Good morning. My name is Carol Anderson, and my husband was Dr. Vlad Midlin. He died on the 2nd of this month, September 2007. He was diagnosed with Parkinson's, which lately became Parkinson's Plus, which does not respond to any Parkinson's treatments. And he was rendered completely immobile. He was paralyzed. The Parkinson's had always affected his speech, but with the Parkinson's Plus, his speech was affected even more. His mind was fully there, he was lucid, he was not clinically depressed, but one had to listen very carefully and very patiently to understand what his needs were. When he was paralyzed, um, the Parkinson's um, would make him stiff and uncomfortable, so in order to not be in pain, he would have to tell me what, how to change his position in order to be more comfortable. Which means that as his Parkinson's Plus progressed, his speech became more difficult and being comfortable and out of pain was more difficult. We didn't even know about uh, end-of-life choices. He, in fact, once he was diagnosed, um, attempted to deliver himself twice unsuccessfully because besides the Parkinson's, he was very strong and very healthy. A friend of mine told us that uh, you could uh, have assistance in dying in Oregon, and so we were preparing to move there and establish res residency. So I called my um, travel agent to find a hospital near a airport, and she found me a hospital, and the hospital that I called informed me that there was Compassion and Choices in Oregon. So I called Compassion and Choices, who told me that they have a San Diego branch. So I called the San Diego branch, who said, get Vlad on hospice right now. We always had thought hospice was nursing care. We didn't know that hospice helps you be comfortable while you die. So that's information that definitely needs to be, to be out. And Compassion and Choices helped us know what all his options were. Because he was paralyzed, he wasn't going to be able to self-administer medication that would help him die. But I was allowed to give him medicine that would keep him out of pain while he chose to stop eating and drinking and to die in that way. Because we don't really know what's happening inside a person when they are in a coma or out with drugs. I can't know for sure how much he might have been suffering while he was out. But I do know that what he wanted was to die as soon as possible and not to be revived. So it was my responsibility to continue to give him the drugs that kept him out of, kept him out of consciousness while he um, starved to death. And it changed how he looked, and I had to witness his dehydration and his starvation, you know, the loss of his rosy color, his struggling to breathe. And I had to maintain strength not to revive him, which would have been what I would have liked to do, seeing what looked like suffering, but would have been a betrayal to him if he found himself awake and alive, again, in that condition. Hospice helped me through it very much because they said they would be there every day if I required it, and I did. I required them to be there every day once he'd stopped eating and drinking in order to have the strength to let him continue through to the end. My understanding is it can take a person as long as 21 days to die that way. Fortunately, it took him only four and a half. I think it's really important that we do have options and aid in dying legally. He would have died much more quickly and easily if either he wasn't paralyzed or if he had the legal right to say this is what I want and somebody could help him administer it. But I am glad for him that he is now relieved of his pain and I'm really glad that this movement is happening where people can at least learn what their options are and that there are options and that there is help and comfort as, you, as one goes through this transition from life to the other side of life. That's it.